The Japanese art of paper folding has been taken to new heights at a school in Essex. It provides a stimulating subject for the art and design class, where pupils can turn pieces of paper into animals and birds, but it also creates something much bigger in size and concept that makes the school unique. Origami has given this school something that can't be found at any other location in Europe and at no other school in the world, a building that's made out of folded cardboard. This is what makes us unique. This is a cardboard building, one of the only buildings like this in the world. It's a sustainable project. It's a really exciting recyclable material and it's got wonderful characteristics for buildings. It's warm, it's very good sound quality and just an excellent material. A very weak, flat piece of paper, when you fold it, it becomes a stronger, more coherent shape. So hence we made folded structures and we made a design that you could fold out of a piece of paper. This cardboard building was the culmination of a 10-year plan to transform the school using exciting and groundbreaking designs created through a partnership between head teacher and architect. It was a plan that originally had nothing to do with recycling, but the school discovered that projects involving sustainability were a great way of attracting grants. For me personally, to have a group of architects who are so innovative and so highly qualified in their own right, um, working alongside us and alongside the children, that's been um, the most exciting thing, really. The cardboard structure attracts architects from around the world, draws the veneration of environmentalists everywhere, and the pupils quite like it too. My friend said that it's stupid to have a classroom made out of uh, cardboard because it, it could catch fire, I agree oh. that. What did you say? Well, I said to that that uh, it was very silly of him to say that. And I said, you're an idiot, <laughs> to be exact. Westborough Primary School at Westcliff-on-Sea, next to Southend-on-Sea, was first opened in 1912, as the head teacher often points out, the same year the Titanic sank beneath the sea. Jenny Davis certainly felt she'd taken over an architectural disaster. The big problem was the school was actually four schools. It was originally built as a special school, a mixed infants, a girls' junior and a boys' junior. In 1992, the school became grant-maintained and pushed ahead with plans to link the buildings. You couldn't get from one part of the school to the other, neither could the children, without getting soaked or slipping over on the ice or so on. So it was a matter of priority that we joined them together. And this was the first structure we built. What else did you do as a matter of priority? Um, certainly this was one, linking the rest of the buildings with the other. And then we had to meet with the fire standards that had been set then. And there was only one part of the building, one classroom in fact, that actually met with modern day standards. So we had to change a lot of the glass in the corridors. The architect employed to oversee the work was perhaps a surprising choice. Richard Cottrell, based in London but originally from South End, had never actually built anything before. As architects, we see it as a unique relationship. They gave us the chance when we were a young practice with no experience and allowed us to create what we think is a wonderful refurbished school. Head teacher and architect proved that innovation sometimes springs from inexperience. This was the first development that we did here back in 1992, a long time ago. We started to divide the playground up. And so we put this ramp in, which was not only for use, obviously, by the children who are disabled and come here and staff, but we actually then divided the playground and started to create a decent space for children to play in. Schools in general, if you look around, they're not the most exciting sites in the world. They often are geared up purely for the caretakers who actually just want a flat um, bit of concrete, really, or asphalt, and they just sweep it once a year. Um, they're not really interested in the children. Our idea was to create a place where all pupils and all teachers at the school could go. And at the time, there was a disabled chairman of the governors and a, and a disabled child. We wanted to create a school where all children could go. So we wanted to create play structures that a disabled child could get up and 
classrooms that they could get into. So that was really the, the driving force behind the, the designs. And then it was being as creative as possible to make these things beautiful and fun. The playground was also enhanced by two more simple ideas. One to create an enclosed area where balls could be kicked without disturbing those who wished for a more peaceful break. And another to turn dilapidated bike sheds into a shady place to meet friends and keep lunch boxes. The next thing we did was to make like the hanging gardens really. So we planted lots of creepers and so on that hang and in the summer um, they hang down and we have loads of plants and berries and so on, hops, all kinds of things, so that the children here have got it, grapevines, all that type of thing, things that are really exciting and discussion points for children to talk about, really. Before we came, uh, the play was dominated by football because it was just tarmac. So what we were looking to do was to try to create different spaces, different environments, break this up so that... Uh, you could do more than just play football, you could have other games, you could use your imagination. So simple things like painting on the floor, painting on the wall, making big signs with fences, things that don't cost a lot of money but don't normally happen uh, when people design schools. The need for a new classroom block led to another radical design, more reminiscent of Southern Africa than East Essex. This building here has got a very large African influence. One of the architects and myself both come from Africa and we had the notion that we should put the corridors on the outside of the building because what we used to have was a door open at one end and when it opened at the other all the heat went out and so we decided to get rid of the internal corridors completely and put them on the outside. So that means you go outside when you go from one classroom to another? Yes. Isn't that a bit cold in the winter? It can be a bit chilly, but it makes the children move faster. So lesson change is slick. Back inside, this performing art studio was originally the boys' toilet block. When it was knocked down, it was discovered the urinals had never been connected to the main drains, which explained one or two other past problems. But never mind the Morris dancers, what about the lunchtime disco dancers? The after-school belly dancers? and the award-winning Irish dancers, including national reel champion Joe. The school needed more space to accommodate all its interests and activities and drew up plans for a new building made of brick. We started off wanting a traditional building made of brick. We wanted it detached from the school so that it could be opened at weekends and after school as a club. And at first, when cardboard was suggested, we did all look quite quizzical at each other. But, I have to say, here it is, and it's got a life expectancy of 25 years. Cardboard had one big advantage over brick, money. Funding for a project of this size using totally recyclable material was available from the Department of Trade and Industry. The material is as strong as, um, as timber, say. I mean, it, it, it all comes from the same family at the end of the day. Paper comes from wood, etc. So, um, the elements have been sized according to, to their strength. I did panic the first few showers of rain and it has actually been flooded when we had a flash flood here. So the whole of the inside filled up and I thought then we might have a very large swimming pool, but that hasn't happened. Most of the cardboard that we see has been treated um, and also during the manufacture, manufacturing process of um, making the actual paper that forms the tubes. One of the additives that are put in there actually enhances the uh, properties to prevent moisture from entering into the paper to prevent it from getting soggy. And then there's also surface treatment as well. In terms of fire, there's a surface protection that's uh, applied to it, um, which is a clear lacquer, um, and that prevents um, any fire from, uh, or fire source in the building from actually igniting the paper. The pupils themselves collected the paper, which was turned into the cardboard which was used in the building. The strength of the structure comes from tubes and the origami-based design. The origami connection is reflected in the artwork on the outside of the building. These are instructions on how to make a crane out of paper. It's known as the Hiroshima crane, a symbol that commemorates a young girl who developed leukaemia as a result of the atom bomb. She heard that if someone who was sick made 1,000 paper cranes, then a wish would be granted by the gods. She died aged 12, having completed 644. 
The building has won two prestigious architectural awards for innovation, including an award presented in the memory of aspiring architect Stephen Lawrence. Just as importantly, the building has won the affection of both staff and pupils. It's a beautiful building. It's great to be inside. It's, the cardboard makes it very insulated. It's very good for showing children how structures work because it's based on the idea of just folding a piece of paper so that it can carry more weight than an unfolded piece of paper. It's excellent how they made it and it's very good because it's, stuck, it's where people can revise, they can do reading, they can do games, they can do really anything what they want. What about you? Well, I think it's like really good because when you're like all hot and bothered, you could just go in there to calm down and chill. Uh, the only thing I don't like about it is, is they're hosting the discos in there. And I don't, because my friends always go to the disco. You don't like the discos? No. It annoys me because I don't always play, then I don't always get to play with them. What should they have in there if not discos? Bowling alley. Cardboard classrooms, however, are not an idea that seems to be catching on just yet. There are no plans for any others anywhere else. It's a case of somebody um, having the confidence to sort of make, take that extra step forward um, to you know, embrace the, the idea and the concept, particularly when one looks at the, the notion of, of the need for us all to, to address sustainability and recyclability of, of, of what we do in our everyday lives. The school has one project left to complete from the original development vision. This is one of our favourite meeting places in the school, which is called the Yellow Circle for obvious reasons. And it's a spongy surface amongst all the asphalt, but underneath it lies our next project where the footings are ready for a big climbing frame which is coming here in July. The play area will be built mainly from reused materials, metal from old hospital beds, an old boat, it means the school can get more funding from the Department of Trade and Industry. Pupils are once again closely involved. We're building a play structure here, all out of reused materials. How could you reuse this table? Around the play area, you could use it to put around it, stop children from... It's a good idea. You could use it as a wall. Yeah. We hope to mm. go to all the people in, in maybe Shoebury and Old Lee and see if there's any old boats. And we're going to yeah, chop, oh, oh, chop yeah. a boat up. I'll use it for like a little sitting area. Yeah, and you can, you can yeah, have a boat. Uh, and then underneath it, we're going to create rooms. Westborough School, of course, no longer has the autonomy it enjoyed as a grant-maintained school. The Education Authority now determines which architects are used for major projects and when work is carried out. We don't like it much because um, I think you still, there still is the issue that people come and do things unto you which you haven't been a part of. I mean, I have made comment about the fact, and so have the architects, about the fact that our plan worked so well. I have to say in the beginning, we didn't know whether we were doing it right or wrong, but it's what we felt was right, and it's turned out to be very good for the school. But when you see South End LEA advertising for a school's origami advisor, you'll know who's taken over. <laughs>